Good morning, Chapel family. Come on, let's stand to our feet. Let's worship together. Oh, we've come here today to give you praise, Lord Jesus. Come on, let's sing it. You call us out from the depths into your freedom. Our chains are gone. No weapon formed shall prevail. Your word is stronger. We overcome. Every voice lift it up. Your glory resounds through the age. All saints declaring your great renown. Your kingdom forever will stand. Cause we won't be shaken. We will not fear. Come on, let's shout it together. Oh, our God, a mighty warrior. You're a consuming fire, in victory you reign. We triumph in your name, Jesus the great commander. You conquered death forever, in victory you reign. We triumph in your name. Holy oh, triumph in your name. Come on, sing it out, your glory. Your glory resounds through the age. All saints declaring your great renown. Your kingdom forever will stand. Because we won't be shaken. We will not fear. Come on, let's shout it together. It's our God, a mighty warrior. You're a consuming fire. In victory you reign. We triumph in your name. Jesus, the great commander. You conquer death forever. In victory you reign. We triumph in your name. Oh, come on with a loud voice. We shout it together. Your name is power, exalted word, no name is oh, no higher, you stand alone, our strong defender, cause above you there's no other, above you oh, come on, there's no other, and we declare your name is oh, your power. Is power. Above you there's no other Above you there's no other Above you there's no other Oh, we sing it up Come on with a loud voice, our God Our God, a mighty warrior Come on You're a consuming fire In victory you reign We triumph Oh, come on Jesus, the great commander You conquered death forever Triumph, we triumph, our God, a mighty warrior. You're a consoler, we sing it out in victory. You reign, we triumph in your name. Jesus, the great commander, you conquer death forever. In victory, holy victory. in you, Lord. Oh, we sing and shout your praise. Oh, come on, church, give them a shout of praise today. Oh, we trust you, Lord. this morning. 
morning stronger than the power of the grave constant through the trial and the change a world thing that remains a world thing that remains your love your love never fails it never gives up never runs out on me your love never fails it never gives up and never runs out on me your love never fails it never gives up and never runs out on me some amazing people standing right next to you. Would you turn and start a conversation with them? Hey everyone, my name's Jonathan and welcome to the chapel. We love that you chose to join us for church today. If it's your first time, we've got a connect card for you to fill out completely from the seat back in front of you. On your way out today, drop it in the giving box located in the back of the worship center in our foyer. This weekend's growth track session is all about building the relationships that will help you to get healthy and find freedom. In session two, we're talking about connecting with your church and connecting in relationship with others. We'll also give you the opportunity to say, count me in and make this church your church. 
Remember that you can always jump into Growth Track at any point. Childcare with a few light refreshments will be available. It all happens in Building B at 10.15 a.m. It's true, groups are where the community starts to feel like a family. Check out all of our spring semester connect groups at our connect groups blast off event, January 27th and the 28th out front after all four of our services. Our leaders are ready to help you find a connect group in your area. Crave, 21 days of prayer and fasting begins this weekend. Praying and fasting are spiritual disciplines designed to better connect us with God by intentionally disconnecting from our usual routine. As a church, we're fasting together in order to deepen our relationship with God, as well as getting into step with His plan and purpose for us during this coming year. Join us for the next three Saturday mornings from 8 to 9 a.m. for a time of prayer and worship together in the Worship Center. For more information, go to thechapel.cc slash fast. Moms, if you ever find yourself looking for a quiet and private spot to take your child during service, a red shirt in the foyer would love to show you the way to our mother's room. Changing tables and a live broadcast of the service are available. Have a great rest of your weekend and I'll see you soon. Will you stand back to your feet? We're going to continue to worship today with one of my favorite hymns. Will you lift your voices, lift your hands, and let's sing it out together today. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my hope and peace. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. We lift your hands up and let's sing it together. We sing, oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. Oh, no other bounds I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Glory, glory, this I sing. It's nothing but the blood of Jesus. All my praise for this I bring. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Come on, every voice lift it up. We sing, oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of, oh, one last time, sing, oh, precious. We sing, oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. Oh, no other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. You 
you've come to bring peace, to be love, to be nearer to us, and you've come to bring life, to be light, to shine brighter in our soul. We be seated. Just stand for just a moment. What I want us to do is, you know, often what will happen is we'll, uh, we'll bring some things into God's house with us that happen to us uh, throughout the week. And that's what we're supposed to do. The difference is, is we're supposed to bring them to God but not leave with them. We're supposed to bring them in to the house of the Lord, bring them to Him but not leave with them. And one of the things that causes us to leave without the things we brought in, whether it be pain or hurt, whether it be discouragement, lack of faith, worry, doubt, whatever it is, one of the things that causes us to go, I'm gonna leave right here. 
is understanding that God is with us. Is understanding that right where we are, God is right there also. So the team is just going to play that chorus again, but give yourself a moment to exhale, to know what you're bringing in, to recognize I don't want to leave with it, because understanding that God is with us, where is that spot in your life that you need? God, I, you've got to be with me here. You've got to be with me in this situation. Lord, you've got to be with me in this moment. Where is that? And then sing and worship like you never have before. Amen? Let's worship together. In our minds and our hearts, Lord, we come together expecting to hear your voice. Lord, expecting you to move in our lives. Lord, we come expecting for you to make us brave in fearful situations. And we continue to welcome you and your Holy Spirit into us being together. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Great to see you guys this morning. Woo, it's going to snow Tuesday. It's going to snow Tuesday. You have no faith. You have no faith. Come on. Yes. Nice and cool outside. Winter's not done, right? I'm telling you, Tuesday, it will snow. Hey, listen, take out your worship guide when you came in this morning. I want to jump right in. I want to continue uh, the conversation, the talk that we're having, exploring what does it mean to be brave in 2018? What does it mean that in 2018, when we face something that could cause us to be fearful, what does it mean to get on the other side of fear? 
What does it mean to be on the other side of fear? What we said uh, last week when we started this was that we didn't want 2018 to be just another year. We wanted it to be the best year in every way possible. What we said was we, there are things that happen in life. As children, fear tends to be a little bit of external monsters and boogie monsters and things that crawl and creep and live under the bed at night. But as we get older, a lot of the things that we become fearful about are actually the things that are in our minds and the things that have made its way into our hearts uh, because we're only born with two fears, the fear of loud noises and the fear of falling. All of the other fears that we have... We accumulate along the journey. And knowing that in 2018, we're going to face some stuff that, just, that may cause us to be fearful. Fearful of, of, of getting terminally ill. Uh, fearful. I was talking to some of the, the men uh, who, who attend Man Code that happened this weekend. And they were, I said, it's kind of hard for men to go, yeah, I was a little scared. I was a little fearful because it's not very machismo. You know what I mean? It's not very macho. But what you'll find is most men will go, I, sometimes I fear or I get worried, I get real concerned. This is a nice little way of saying, but it's really fearful, of saying, I, I just don't know. What happens if I lose my job? What if I lose my gig? And, and I can't provide. Then what will happen? You know, I've backed myself in a quarter professionally and I hope things work out. Sometimes we have fear of, uh, of finances and fear of things that can happen in our businesses. Fear of not being enough for a certain, for a relationship. Sometimes we have fear of, of our, for our children. What are our children going to turn out like? <laughs> you know, I'm fearful of that. Or sometimes I'm even fearful. I, I've been thinking, what, I'm fearful of man, what, 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 what's going to look like. What's the world going to look like with our grandkids? Like what kind of culture? And, and so you can get fearful from many different things in life. It doesn't always have to be monsters and goblins. <laughs> but it can be things that we create in our minds. And what we, ta- what we talked about last week was finding out What it meant in this story in Matthew 14 and Mark chapter 6 in the scriptures talking about being on the other side of fear. What does it mean to be brave? And what we've said for we're going to have this one scripture uh, throughout the entire series. It's kind of like our mantra. Understanding, getting us on the same page. And it was that we know, believers and followers of Christ, we know that in all things... Not just the things we can understand, not just the things we can wrap our brains around, not just the things that make sense to us, but all those things that we go, what? Like, what's actually going on there? What What is happening in those things? In all things, God works for the good of those who love him. Amen? That's been kind of, that's our mantra, that in all things, all situations... Now, what we discovered in Matthew 14 and Mark chapter 6, it repeats it in the Gospels, is this this incredible story with Jesus and the disciples. Jesus just finishes uh, turning just a a little bit of bread and some fish uh, that would feed maybe 10, 15 people. He turns it, he multiplies it to feed 5,000. The disciples are like, wow, unbelievable. When they're done, Jesus says, hey, listen, I want you to do something. I want you to get in a boat. And I want you to go to the other side. we got some more things to do. But when, when you get in the boat, I'm going to go to the mountain and I'm going to pray. The disciples get in the boat and they start to make their way to their destination. They start to make their way to where Jesus wants them. Jesus goes to the mountain to pray. And we started dissecting this story step by step because it's incredibly rich. It, it has so much depth to it about what does it mean to be on the other side, from where you are to the other side of fear, from where you are to being on the other side to where we can be brave no matter what we face. And so we discovered a couple of things. Last week we said being brave is believing that God sees you. Jesus was up on a mountainside and the scriptures tell us that he sees, he saw the disciples straining against the oar, straining against the wind. We become fearful And it's hard for us to be brave when we believe we're the only one going through something and our spiritual enemy will try to isolate us to tear down and break down any relationship we have with our Savior. Amen? Believe that you're the only one and that you're alone. But Scripture tells us in this story that that Jesus sees you, that he sees you in that situation. He understands. He sees it. And, And then we find out that being brave means we have to continue to experience God. We don't know what time the disciples left the shore in the boat. 
We don't know what time, but we do know that it says in the fourth watch of the evening, which means right before the dawn, they found themselves in the middle of the lake in a storm where the wind was pushing and crashing the waves against the boat. So it's anywhere between six to eight to maybe ten hours since they've experienced Jesus multiplying the loaves and the fish. And what we discovered is you can't have any amount of time go by. Any amount of time go by where you're not experiencing God by praying, by reading, by going to church, by collectively living life together. You can't have any time going by where you're not experiencing God because it'll cause you to be fearful when you hit a storm. You have to continually be experiencing God. We connected the amount of how fearful I am is directly connected to my lack of experience with God. And then what we discovered was that understanding, being brave is understanding that there's purpose in fear. In the middle of the lake, right before the sun comes up, Scripture tells us that the disciples are crying out in fear. Jesus comes walking on the water. Of course he does. Of course he does. Jesus comes walking on the water. The disciples, they don't know who it is. They say it's a ghost. Scripture tells us they don't even, know, they don't even recognize it. They think it's a ghost. What Jesus is showing the disciples is, I'm coming walking on top of the problem. The, the, the problem was the waves. The problem was the wind. The problem was the water. What Jesus says is, watch what I'm doing. I'm walking on top of the problem, and I'm trying to teach you to be above and on top of things and not be consumed by them. That there's purpose. And we said that there was this, oh, Jesus, out of the fear, in the fearful situation, what Jesus did was create a pathway he used the problem as a pathway to get to the disciples and for the disciples to get to him. All in the middle in a fearful situation. So, let's continue. Here's where we pick up the story. Saturday night, I, I, was, I was praying uh, because you guys basically get the leftovers, okay? That's what, this is like the fourth service. I'm really tired. I'm really, you know, I'm like, oh gosh, let's get out of here. You know what I mean? I'm just kidding. Saturday night I was praying, and I was like, oh. I was like, Lord, and I just felt like the Lord say, hey, I want you to mention this, which is always a little scary. So if it really resonates with you and your heart and your mind, it was God. If it wasn't, it's because I'm all doped up on apples and bananas and granola right now because of the fast. So for the next 21 days, I am not responsible for what is said from up here, okay? Because I am... I love fruit. I love fruit. It's wonderful. Listen, in this scripture, right before Peter says, gets this bright idea of, uh, of wanting to walk on the water, there's this little exchange that happens. It, it's such a classic story in Christendom that if we're not careful, we'll get too familiar with certain Bible stories and we'll miss the brilliance. So we have to be very careful. The disciples are in the boat, and, and Jesus comes walking on the water. And they, the, the scripture tells us that the disciples were already fearful and cried out. Some translations say that they cried aloud separately by themselves. Listen, in a boat, but separately crying out in fear. Here comes Jesus walking on the water, and they say they don't recognize Jesus. And this is what God wants to say to us today. Listen, he, he says, they, they, the story, the, the, the voice of God says in the scriptures that, that they look and they go, I don't know. Is that a ghost? They can't recognize Jesus. They, they don't really, they can't really see that it's him. They can't really make it out. They're like, I don't know. I mean, the wind's going. It's taking the waves. The boat's rocking. Everybody, John's probably at the bottom crying. Who knows what's happening? They're just like, I can't really, I don't. And they're yelling out in fear. And Jesus says, take courage. It's me. Take courage. It is I. And we'll miss it. You never drift you never just drift into being brave. You have to do something proactive to become brave. Jesus says, he doesn't say be courageous. He said, take courage. Take it. 
Take hold of my spirit. Take hold of the word of God. Take hold of the mind of Christ. Take courage, the scripture says. Jesus says, it's, take courage. So you just don't wake up, boom, you're courageous. Boom, you're brave. You have to do something. You've got to, Jesus uses the same word in the Hebrew that's used in the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain. And what the, that word means is to grab and journey. To grab and journey. What the commandment means is don't take the Lord's name in vain. Don't you know that as a believer and follower of Christ and a son and daughter, when you decide in your heart and in your mind to follow Jesus, not be perfect, but to follow Jesus, you have a deposit of the Holy Spirit inside of you. You have this great power that is waiting to be ignited. You have this unbelievable purpose in your body and in your mind. You begin to have the mind of Christ. Don't take that Put to places, don't take it anywhere in vain. If I ask you, hey, do me a favor, take this to my friend, and I have a bag of something, and I give it to you, and I say, take this to my friend, what you will do is you will move. You will go and grab it and move it to where I ask you. Watch what the word is doing here. Jesus says, take courage, step out and do something to be brave. You've got to step out and do something and take hold of courage. You just don't slide into it. You just don't wake up with it. You don't drift into being brave. Brave in the face of fear, no matter what it is, is because we were deliberate to do something. Now, we pick up the story. Take courage, it is I, Jesus says. Lord, if it's you, Peter says. So Peter's still not sure. Jesus has already spoken. Jesus said, take courage, I hear you're screaming. Look at you guys, you're screaming, you're fearful. Take courage, it's me. Peter's not satisfied with what he hears. He needs to hear more. Lord, if it's you. And the first thing of his voice wasn't satisfactory. It didn't convince him. He wasn't completely sure. Lord, if it's you. He's got still, see, watch. I don't know, I can't tell. Is that really, Jesus? I can't really, whew, man, I don't know. There's a lot of wind right now. I can't really, is that Jesus? I don't know. He looks kind of heavy. Jesus is kind of thin. I mean, it's just like, it doesn't really look like him. I don't know. John, get up out of the bottom of the boat. Is that Jesus? I don't know. I'm not getting up. I, don't, I can't really, listen to what's happening. I can't really see, I can't really see that it's Jesus because the circumstances around me are blurring my vision to make out whether it's Jesus or not. I can't really tell whether it's God. I can't really figure out, is that God? Because there's a lot of wind. There's a lot of things going on in my life. There's a lot of problems in my marriage. There's a lot of issues with my kids. I can't seem to get my finances right. I'm having trouble with relationships at work and in the community. I can't really see that Jesus is around. I can't make it out. So what Peter says is I can't tell by what I see. And he says, Lord, if it's you, because I'm not quite sure just from the words, take courage, it is I. I need to hear more. What Peter is saying, I can't tell that it's you by what I see, because there's so much weirdness and things going on around me, I can't figure it out. But if I can hear your voice, I can tell who you are. And if I know it's you by your voice, I'll do whatever you ask me to do. Because there are times, church, are you getting something out of this? Listen, there are times in our life that when we look around, we can't see God moving. The circumstances of our life, our culture, our society, our community, it makes it hard to see whether Jesus is moving or not. It's really hard sometimes with our issues in our families to really, where is God in this? 
well, I can't really make it out. I can't really see. We're kind of backed in a corner right now, relationally, financially, spiritually. I can't really. So I need something else. This is the only thing I want us to get this morning. I need something else to tell that it's you. I need something else because I'm not sure by what I see. So Lord, if it's you, because I'm still not quite sure, tell me to come to you on the water. See, what Peter's saying is, I can't tell who you are by what I see, but I can tell who you are by your voice. And if I know who you are by your voice, what you tell me to do, I will be able to accomplish. I can't tell by my sight. I can't tell by what I'm looking at because things are whacked out right now. But, I, but if I can know and I can figure out who you are by your voice, whoo, then all you got to do is tell me to do that and I'll do it. All you got to do is tell me to move and I'll go. All you got to, what? If I know it's you by your voice, then you tell me to do something, and as impossible as it may seem, I will be able to do it. See, see, see what, what, what does the scripture say? Faith comes by hearing the word of God. Maybe because sometimes if our faith was just based on what we see, we would have very little or none at all. See, see, it's what well, Peter, I need Jesus to speak more because when he said, take courage, it is I, I couldn't quite distinguish. So if you'll talk a little bit more, I'll figure out who you are. And once I know who you are and that's you, once I have established that it's, once I know it's your voice, who I'll get out of the boat in faith on a storm and come to you on the water. And then of course, Jesus, in true rabbi fashion, says one word, right? I'm thinking Jesus could say a paragraph for me to help figure out who it is. He says one word, come. Here's, here, listen, with the brilliance of the scripture, you got to know someone really well to recognize them by one word. You, gotta, you really got to know somebody to recognize them by just one word, Come. See, a lot of us are having a hard time being brave because we're not hearing his voice. We're not hearing his voice. We got a lot of other voices in our life. What the scripture is revealing is you have to take my voice and apply it. You have to take a hold, take courage. You have to take hold of courage. My word, you have to take courage, take hold of the word of God, which is his voice to us today. We got so many voices telling us how to raise our family, how to date, how to do things, who to marry, who not to marry. Who to, we got so many voices and God's voice is just among the many instead of being the number one thing we hear. It's hard to be brave to step out of the boat and survive a fearful situation and do the impossible through something that is plaguing us or is a problem when we're not commanded by the right voice. Peter just said, I got to know. I can't tell. But I can't tell by what I'm looking at. I just can't see. I can't, I can't really see. So, hey, if it's you, tell me because I'll know your voice. We are in this culture running, I want to say this with as much love as I have left after four services. Are you ready? We're running out of reasons why, what I like to call excuses. God's voice to us today is his word. It's his word. We're running out of reasons why not to have God's voice in our life. Every week you come in here, that's awesome. Every week in the worship guide, there's a two to four minute, two to four minute, let me say it again, seems like a lot, right? Two to four minute scripture reading about what we're talking about so we can hear God's voice. I have the Bible app on every device I have. I, love, I really do like to read. I love to read, but I don't love it that much, to be honest. I love to read, but I don't like, I'm like, ah, I got to read, I got to read. 
Sometimes I don't, I don't listen to a lot of music. I listen to, I listen to certain music and when I worship, and when I'm worshiping just as me as a believer and follower, not a pastor, and then I'll listen to some music when I'm writing or whatever. But listen, sometimes I just have the word on the Bible app, on the sound, on the sound. It's, it's, just, in this, it's just on in the car. I like to use the guy's voice from London. I like his voice. It makes me feel international. You know what I mean? I like his voice. He's just talking. He just has the, the word is just on. It's just on in the background. And then sometimes when I'm sitting, I'm like, oh, that verse. And I'm listening to it. And I can hear it. We're running in Western culture out of excuses on why we don't have. Being brave is about having God's voice louder than all of the other things around us. So we recognize it and at his command we get to do things that we normally wouldn't get to do, Peter. See, being brave means I, 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 put, a, I put an importance on his voice. And what he says about my dating life. And about what he says about my marriage and my kids and my finances and my profession. What he says about where I go. and Can we have a little fun this morning? Can we just have a little fun, right? We'll do, okay, nobody wants to have fun? Okay, get out. All right, good. Ready? I thought I saw Pastor Dave. It's Pastor Dave. Where's Pastor? There's Pastor. Pastor Dave, guys. Yes. All right, I'll tell the story. I did that. Because it feels a little awkward, like when you walk up and there's no sound to me, right? So I did that Saturday night. I said, guys, Pastor Dave, two people went like that. Like, God, he's very insecure. He's very insecure. This is my, this is my. Stupid. <laughs> they love you. Pastor Dave, he goes, that's my favorite service. It's awesome. It's my phone, right? My phone. It's my phone. Uh, you know, you, you hey, Siri. Hey Siri. Hey Siri. Let me do it again. Hey Siri. Okay, my phone, right? Hey Siri. Go ahead. Oh. (laughs) Hey Siri. Yeah. <laughs> hey Siri. Hey Siri. I'm so hungry right now. I feel like I'm feeding you. I feel like I'm like. <laughs> hey Siri. Hey Siri. Is that the Brooklyn version? You tried. Right, I tried. <laughs> hey. S- <laughs> hey Siri. Yeah. Hey Siri. <laughs> right? Yeah. The device only works. The device only does what it was created to do when it hears the right voice. The device only unlocks what's there or what's been put in. The device only allows something to go in or, do, or allows something to go out based on the correct voice. The device only gives us its potential and only does and acts the way it was built to operate when the right voice activates it. Nothing gets in and nothing gets out unless it knows and has been directed by the master's voice. So this is what the Lord would say this morning. What would our life look like if the only the things that we did and the things that we said were directed by the master's voice it it can't be that crazy it can't be that crazy we've created devices to do it here's an idea a device was already created to do that a device was already created to do it That's a replica. (laughs) We think it's new technology. It may come in a new package, but the principle has been around for thousands of years. 
Only the right voice should unlock what you think about, what you do, how you behave, and what you say. See, this is the story. This is the brilliance. This is the brilliance of the scriptures. What this story is really about is going, I sometimes can't see God. I sometimes can't figure out by what I see what he's doing. He's, I just don't get it. I can't wrap my head around it. I don't understand it. But if I hear your voice, I'll recognize who you are. And when I know it's your voice, whatever you tell me to do, I'll be capable of doing, even in the middle of a storm. Take hold of the word of God and his voice and be brave. That's the story. That's the story of the scriptures. Take hold of my voice and carry it with you in the storm and you'll be brave. You'll recognize me not by what you see, but by what you hear. And you'll know it's me by my word. And you'll do things in the middle of the storm you thought you couldn't do. You'll find out deeper at a deeper level who I am in the middle of the fear, not without the fear. That's the beauty of the story. It's interesting, uh, over and over in Scripture, you'll see this. When he, Jesus, has brought out all his own, he goes on where? Ahead of them. When Jesus brings to his own, us, believers and followers of Christ, when he brings uh, us to himself, he goes on. Come here. Come. Interesting. Come. 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 And then he goes on out ahead. He goes ahead of them. Does it? Jesus, we can't forget it. Jesus has the biggest and best picture for our families. Jesus has the biggest and best picture for our marriages. Jesus has the biggest and best picture for our finances. Jesus has the biggest and best pictures for our relationships. Jesus has the biggest and best picture for our personalities, the way we're wired and what he wants us to do. He always has the biggest and the best for us. He goes on ahead ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his have you ever been with someone and you want to go somewhere, but you don't know how to get there, right? You don't necessarily know how to get there. So what you say is, I don't want to take directions. I'll just follow you. I'll just follow you. That's what I'll do. You get in a car together with your friend, and another friend goes on ahead, right? And you're a little freaked out because you know they're not good drivers. So you're all up on the steering wheel like this, right? You're all just like, what in the world's going on? And then because you're a Christian and they are the devil, what happens is you'll pass through a red light. They make the light and then they leave you at the red light. They're driving a white Honda. Now all of a sudden there are a thousand white Hondas. Right? You know that person. You probably sit next to that person, right? And you follow them and you're just like, where are I kid? They're weaving in and out of traffic and you're... Like, where are they? I can't really see. Where are they? I don't really know. So what do you do? You call them. Hey, stupid, where are you? (laughs) You I got to hear a voice. Maybe the brilliance of the scripture, maybe the brilliance of the scripture is because Jesus has the biggest and best picture for our lives always that he gets so far out ahead of us and he does things because it's Jesus who put the disciples in the boat he has the biggest and best picture for our lives always that when we start to see him do things we don't understand the only way we continue to follow is when we hear his voice he's so far out ahead he's so far out ahead on what's best for us. Just, and we just go, well, I can't really see what. Oh, it's just like Peter. I don't know if it's him. I don't, I don't, I can't. Golly, it's so windy. So much going on. What happens? What would happen? Here's a challenge. 
if during communion we only heard the voice that says, I'll never leave you alone. What happens if during communion we only heard the voice, hey, hey, I see what you're going through. I'm with you. What happens if during communion, if, if we only behaved based on the right voice, if we only said things based on, if, if we're, oh, we were only commanded, if we were the only command, we'd only move by the right command from the right voice. What happens if during communion, we only heard the voice saying that, I can't love you any more than I love you right now. See, this is one of the reasons why Jesus said, hey, you, you, you disciples, listen, you got to do this in remembrance. This visual reminder. Because you're going to be reminded by my voice. But I also, I just want to, because you lose sight sometimes. You lose sight sometimes. You have to have a visual reminder to line up with your valuable. It's not based on what you've done or not. It's based on who I am. Because while you were still wrong and while you were still doing things that I did not create you to do or say, I gave my son. You need a visual. Later on, Paul, in the New Testament churches, he said, hey, whatever whatever you do, don't rush through this. Just don't make it part of the meal. Oh, no, it's like really too important to do that. Take a second and remember, because you're going to need a visual reminder, because your vision's going to get a little jacked up because you can't really figure it out. You can't really see it. You can't really distinguish it. You can't really discern it. You you can't really differentiate. You can't really, so you're going to need a visual reminder to go along with what you hear his voice in his word say. I can't love you any more than I love you right now. Be brave in your situation. Know that I see you. Don't let any time go by that you don't experience me. Because you're going to start to get fearful. I've got a purpose for where you are in the middle. Take hold of my word, my voice. Now, there's a lot of other voices, the Lord says, but it's got to be mine that commands you. What happened? What would happen to our lives? How would they look like if these are the things, the words that we would hear when we take communion? What we do here at the chapel is the bread is a symbol of a body beaten, and we dip it into the juice as a symbol of bloodshed. Those things represent all the sins that you and I have created and will create. God says, I'm going to even up. I'm going to even it up. I'm going to take care of it. I'm just, I'm just going to take care of it. And we return to our seats after taking communion. And we worship at another level because we just realized at a deeper level. Ooh. That, was a, that was a powerful visual reminder of how important I am to God. We return to our seats and we worship more than we did when we walked in. Because I was reminded what I see and what I hear. They're lining up. You got you to take hold of God's word, which is his voice. And you'll know it's his voice when you pray, when you feel like he says something, because it'll line up with his word. You're going to get overcome by the wind and the waves. 
what the Lord will say this weekend above everything else. Ooh, take my voice. Take my voice. Have my voice be the loudest. And be brave. And when you're ready, let's take communion together. that once was crowned with thorns is crowned with glory now the Savior knelt to wash our feet now at his feet we bow the one who wore our sin and shame now robed in majesty the radiance of perfect love now shines for all to see your name your name is victory and all praise will rise to christ our king it's your name your name is victory and all praise will rise to christ our king oh Fear that held us now gives way to him who is our peace. His final breath upon the cross is now alive in me. It's your name, your name. Is victory and all praise will rise to Christ our King. It's your name, your name is victory and all praise will rise to Christ our King. Oh, all my praise will rise to you. Always sing by your spirit. It's by your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat. Cause the resurrected King is resurrecting me in your name. Oh, I come alive. Cause the resurrected Come on, let's stand to our feet and let's worship our God. Come on. By your spirit, I will rise from the ashes of defeat. Cause the resurrected King is resurrecting me. In your name, I come alive to declare your victory. Cause the resurrected King, come on, every voice lift it up by your spirit. It's by your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat. Cause the resurrected King is resurrecting me. It's in your name, oh, I come alive to declare your victory. Cause the resurrected King is resurrecting me. Come on, will you lift your hands all over this place and sing it with me? The tomb where soldiers watched in vain Was borrowed for three days 
His body there would not need me. Come on, let's shout it together. Our God has robbed the grave. Oh, come on. So our God has robbed the grave. Oh, oh you robbed the grave, Lord. Oh, come on, every voice, we shout it out. Because your name, your name. All praise will rise to Christ our King. Oh, it's your name, your name is victory. And all praise will rise to Christ our King. Oh, come on, church, give Him a shout of praise today. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We're thankful for you, Jesus. Man, guys, we love you so much. Thank you for being with us this weekend. The giving boxes are in the back of the worship center and in the foyer. We love you. We'll see you next weekend.